Hello to the chicos, hello to the chicas. Um, I'm back at you with a new video in which video I'm going to discuss with you a uh, phenomenon, a mindset that I um, often see coming to the fore, um, which is something that a lot of people need to adjust and tweak in their mindset because usually it's one that uh, <clears throat> needs a fair bit of uh, rethinking and that is... Um, what I tend to call a, the defensive mindset, but probably it's not even the right way to put it because what I really want to talk about in this video is, is that when you feel the need to defend, the first thing that you need to make sure is, is that, <coughs> excuse me, do you really need to defend? And two, if you choose to do so, then what are the appropriate measures um, to actually engage with defense at the expense of continuing your plans or whatever the case may be. But predominantly, um, we are going to actually look into <clears throat> the big, big question of, do I even need to defend? And usually this um, question uh, gets the altogether wrong answer uh, in a lot of cases when the correct answer would be a no. Let's, uh, let us let the games uh, speak for themselves rather than me because I'm struggling with my words as usual. So <clears throat> first game is going to be a, a club level game. Players are rated about 1100. Um, <clears throat> and we will see something uh, very, very largely typical on this level. White plays a very, very excellent opening. <clears throat> and actually is winning the game by move 10. The knight on e5 is about to perish. There is nothing to be done because uh, f4 is coming no matter what. Black plays bishop d6. We go f4. Winning the piece, castles trying to get out of trouble, takes bishop c5, and ta-da! <clears throat> we have arrived at the crucial moment of the game where uh, what I like to call the defensive mindset kicks in. First and foremost, we are up in material quite significantly, which means that by default, our mindset has to be attacking. You can't afford to be up material and be passive. Because that's the ultimate way how your material is going to count to nothing at all because you are not using it. So the <coughs> excuse me, the knee-jerk reaction, what I like to call this phenomenon, is right now kicking in when our opponent plays bishop c5 and we see this very annoying, not at all, uh, discover check pending and so we instantly go king h1 and anytime i see this the first question i like to ask is that what was black threat in this position and almost exclusively the answer is d3 check and i'm like what is d3 check threatening with exactly and even after i'm asking this question often people don't understand where i'm going with this because it's so apparent with the d3 oopsie wrong button sorry um yeah, d3 check is the threat. I'm like, what is the threat with d3 check? It is, and it goes to and fro until finally it dawns on us that, well, actually, if I play something quite decent and aggressive and attacking, like queen h5, which actually fundamentally stops black's main counterplay with queen h4, by the way, um, <clears throat> and puts pressure here and here, it totally allows the threat which actually does absolutely nothing other than bringing my bishop into the attack, which now is <clears throat> getting absolutely ridiculous. And uh, black is essentially out of the game. Note that after d3 check, I also had bishop e3 takes takes with the rook coming into the attack. And again, the pawn, not only does it not pose any threats, but as a matter of fact, it actually helps me to attack, whether it be take take, or d2 knight takes d2 developing my pieces. <clears throat> and this is little things like this. These little things can actually decide the game uh, in the wrong direction, so to speak. Because here we play king h1, allowing actually queen h4. Maybe queen h4 is not quite good here. Bishop b7 makes perfect sense with the idea of queen h4. Bishop f4, a5, whatever. And queen h4 did arrive. And although white is still totally winning, but here black came up with a very curious and clever attacking concept, which was rook lift on the a6. I really, really like this creative idea. 
and although white is still winning easily by simply taking d4 and when the rook lands here we just go king g1 moving out of this pin now that is no longer on and white is winning no worries but you can already see that the attack is coming it's annoying and eventually this is what happens and black went on to win now i don't want to blame king h1 for this loss <coughs> purely because there were several blunders afterwards but you can see that the mentality has switched instantly as soon as we raked in the material from aggressive to defensive and instead of us winning this game in the next five moves we actually allowed our opponent to come back by playing a few timid moves and all of a sudden it was their game not so much to win but to play so to speak where they were allowed to do things where they were allowed to call the shots precisely the very thing that should never ever happen when you are a material so once again what i'm arguing for in this video is to try to resist this knee-jerk reaction of whoa that's a threat i better defend and erase this kind of mentality entirely from your thinking and replace it with a what is the threat and if you come to the conclusion that there isn't one then you are not going to defend a non-existent threat, but you are going to either play the correct 92 or the correct queen h5 and carry on absolutely killing it and just win without any dramas. Now, one step up from this, or if you like, 7,000 steps up from this is the following game, which was sent to me by a very, very keen supporter of, the, uh, of my stream. Um... He's a junior player who very, very regularly visits and uh, participates in all kinds of things that we do on stream. And it turns out that he actually played his game against none other than uh, GM, GM Hiki, uh, Hikaru. So, yeah, we went from zero to hero. Well, no, not quite zero, but from club level to the very top end of the spectrum. And yet, <coughs> some of the mistakes will be quite identical not quite by Hickey, but uh, the white player. So this is a hmm, King's Indian with Bishop D3, not exactly a dream scenario. White is, yeah, playing a few iffy moves here. And Hikaru begins his kingside attack like he should in the King's Indian. H5 is a very cool move, planning to read out the bishop here on the dark squares. Bishop E3 has been denied. F5, A5 is really, really cool to, again, make these dark squares weaker and make the whole attack um, from white side very very difficult on the queen side dun, 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 and here we go baby hickey plays h4 which again is a totally normal move absolutely fine and instantly as soon as we see this we play h3 triple question marks and again the mindset the mentality is very difficult to change because people who play these types of moves, they are 100% convinced that they had to do it. That there was no other way, because I can't allow h3 is the mindset. Because that weakens my king. And when I speak it, I'm already like, inside I'm laughing, because not at them, but with them. Because h3 actually doesn't create that much of a weakness. White playing h3 on the other side, or on the other hand, rather, creates this ginormous dark squared issue that is fixed forever, and we can't ever undo this. And I am, as white, the defender, doing their job. I have weakened the king's side beyond repair. They could have never achieved this on their own accord, they needed me for this. Now, in very strong contrast to this, let's see what happens if I actually foolishly fall for the intention and allow h3. I pass by g3 and I asked him, why didn't he go for this? Oh, I was scared about f4 and then the black pieces coming in. Am I coming in where? And this is where the whole conversation took a very vague turn because there is no clear direction here in terms of how the black pieces can invade. I'm not saying black doesn't have action going on. They can go king here, knight here, queen in, knight here, and then hope for a sack here. 
but this is very very I don't wouldn't want to use the word easy but thematic to defend white has very very good chances of uh, fending this whole attack off and in fact if you ask the mighty engine not that I like to do such things in positions like this the mighty engine actually slightly prefers white and needless to say that the mighty engine is not faced the least about h3 at all in fact it doesn't even reckon with black wanting to, wanting to play h4 so if i play a a pass move like bishop c2 the engine moves out bishop f4 which again is designed to try to soften the dark squares or take on e4 which i kind of also dislike i'm pretty sure that hickey he would have played something like this 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 is somewhat known for humans to be a sensible plan to read out this knight and again play on the dark squares on the dark squares that we just went like have them all baby us we played this now all of these plans are seven thousand times more powerful because we made these squares weak so here again comes the knee-jerk reaction that whoo h3 is coming i better stop it and by doing so you do so much more harm to your own position than if you actually allow your opponent to execute what you were so fearful of because here and that's the other thing that this pawn chain is still malleable it's not rigid so i can still push this way still push this way and i can retake with a pawn on the other hand this is entirely fixed and rigid it can't move none of these guys are moving anymore and there are humongous gaps in between them so this is another example when the i wanted to defend the threat actually turned out to be absolutely disastrously harmful and now that i showed you two examples of what this looked like in uh lower rated players practice not talking about uh, black hickey here but the white player i show you how a grandmaster treats a similar scenario and here in the white trunks is uh <coughs> singapore's newest grandmaster uh, kevin go Wei ming um legendary dude um he's a streamer um as well he actually visited australia a number of times too so uh, yeah kevin is a great guy i really like to um actually observe his games too because he has got a very very cool very aggressive style check out what he does in this game he's white at the time of the game he was 24 50 ish massively underrated really against the 26 40. let me check that quick for you 26 45 gm uh ma kun and uh this is how the game goes totally normal giaco piano <coughs> italian opponent plays h6 stock standard however opponent plays g5 not stock standard now you see this and if you have got the mentality of the previous two players you are like whoa g4 is coming i better defend and thus you would immediately allow them to accelerate their attack by about 7,000 km per hour because the whole idea of a pawn storm like this is to create an open file now that is going to take two eternities for black to achieve because they will need to push this pawn all the way here and that one all the way here so that's actually let me count that for you because i like those counts so that's one two three four five pawn moves not really realistic is it five moves instead now the knee-jerk reaction of let's stop this makes it happen in one or if i really want to be very strict with myself in two and that's all so what does the grandmaster do when he sees this he goes like meh you're not meant to do a wing attack when your king is in the middle and so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to strike in the center as soon as i can he first reshuffles the knights which i quite liked 93 is now really really well placed now again he sees that g3 is coming so what does he do 
nothing. He doesn't play h3, he doesn't play g3. That's not his area to act on. That's the opponent's playground. We don't play there. He plays knight f1 to stop it so that he can take either way and then retake with the knight. And that's totally fine. And after rook g8, he goes, okay, baby, now I'm coming for you. Partly on the other wing, partly in the center. Knight e7, b5, a5, queen b3. And now you can see that black has burned the bridges very, very big time. And now white is trying to point out these little issues uh, in black's position. And ta-da, here we go, baby, d4 and absolutely explodes the position in black's face in a superbly aggressive fashion. Note that both pawns are hanging and we care about neither because this is how good chess is played. There is an attack coming at you here, which in this case is unsound. Hickey's attack was totally spot on. And so the correct reaction was to ignore. Not the instant defend, defend, defend or else these pawns will take me by a landslide on the contrary let them come and in the meantime he just engineered a brilliant counterplay i didn't even get into analyzing this game too deeply but um for example here after takes knight f5 is uh looking absolutely magnificent knight takes pawn takes king f8 pins the exchange here that's very nice <clears throat> and if bishop takes pawn takes um, this is looking uh, particularly juicy. Again, the open file, the bishop coming here. I would not want to. Well, I wouldn't want to be blacky, man. That much is certain. D5. What's the punishment for D5? Bishop A3. Wow. And just casually retake on C4. Oh my word. Wowzers. Kevin, go you beast. That's how you defend, my friends. That's how you defend, by not really defending. And I'm not saying it as a generic rule that you should never defend, because you sometimes have to. But when attacks like this come, this is the right way to deal with it. Absolutely love this play, man. D4, knight e4, knight d5. And here comes one of the greatest moves of the century, by the way. No kidding. Rook e4. Destroys the center. Saxon exchange for total domination. Check this out. Takes. Knight check. Bishop h6. And now this black army is just so badly paralyzed. And then after d5. Oh my god. This game on its own right actually should be put in a separate video. Analyzed for like 40 minutes or so in terms of depth. Because what Kevin did here is beyond insanity. He played here knight e3. And in a chess based article, <clears throat> he expressed his view that the best part about this game was not the fact that he actually played it, but the fact that afterwards, uh, a 2670 GM, I can't remember which one it was, actually, I will look that up for you for history's sake as well. <clears throat> um, Anton Demchenko went up to him and went, like, Yo, can you explain this to me? Because I just don't get it. Like, how cool is that? A 2670 goes up to you and says, I don't understand that move, which, by the way, is by far the best move in the position and computer uh, approved. I'll tell you the idea, not that I figured out, but Kevin told me. The idea is that many times when you play knight h5, knight f5 defends g7 sufficiently. So knight e3 is purely a move to take away the f5 square from the knight. Now, the additional cool ness or the cool factor about this move is, is that if you take after queen takes now the knight is well and truly glued to e7 because upon its moving we have got queen g8 check so now according to the engine it's already plus six despite of the fact that um white is a full rook down it's just breathtaking there's no defense whatsoever to be found against knight h5 and bishop g7 the more i look at it the more i'm like wow man Wow, this is chess. This is how you play chess. And uh, Kevin goes on to win without too many dramas uh, in this position. It's uh, materially for more or less even. And um, the Black King is just uh, entirely exposed. The rest is not really important for our theme. 
he just uh, mowed down the entire black army and eventually the king got caught but what i really want you to take away from this apart from the fact that kevin is a tactical beast of uh, an altogether different league is the lack of the knee-jerk reaction of i must do something no you don't actually that is what i really want you to take away from this game that you see it you think about it you respect it you think it through you respect it as much as it deserves to be respected actually important correction because that move actually deserves very little respect because it turns out that the plan is not that good behind it and then you act accordingly and he kevin just allowed those pawns to run 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 and they amounted to nothing other than uh, an ultimate source for the weakness of many many squares and the black king behind them a fabulous masterpiece here by the singaporean gm and once again a textbook case of how you should think when an attack is coming at you is it really hurting me do i really need to respond and more often than not you will find that the ultimate answers to these two questions very often will be a no and a no and then your reaction should be like this one was uh, where kevin went absolute nuts and uh, destroyed his 2600 rated um, opponent so no more knee-jerk reactions when it comes to defending guys that's the big message from uh, today's video i hope you liked it and i will be back with more later thanks for watching bye